Good morning, everyone, and welcome back, my athletes. This is my strength video number 17, and today we are going to concentrate on lengthening and stretching something you might conclude all your strength workouts with. So uh, something very, very light today, obviously, and um, something very calming which we could all use more of right now. Um, I'm going to just have a space. I have my mat laid out there. You can see that. I also would like you to have a little towel, a hand towel um, would be preferable in length. And, and that's it. You're ready to get started on our, 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 our lengthening stretch strength video. I'd like you to come to standing. I'd like your feet to be wider than your shoulders, your toes turned out, and if you do have a mat like this, just see how your, my feet are just on either edge of the mat. For the towel, I want you to hold either end, and we're just going to squat down, reach down, lift up, reach up, squat down, reach down, Lift up, reach up. Now I'm gently tugging on either end of the towel as I come up. And I'm not going fast, right? This is a slow, lengthening stretching. I'm gonna show you from the side. Come down, reach down, and notice my arms make a big semi-circle in front of me. Come up and reach up. Excellent. Nice and slow, squat down. Nice and slow, stand, reach up. This should feel good, right? This should not feel like your heart rate is up. This should feel very calm and controlled. Excellent work. Give me two more like this. Just squat down, reach down, semicircle arms up. Give me one more, squat down, reach down, semicircle reach up. From here, you can walk your feet in just a little bit with the arms overhead holding onto the ends of the towel. I'm going to actually press my, my towel, my arms, slightly behind my head. Let me show you from the side. Slightly behind my head. I just want to open up through the shoulders, the front of the shoulders, the chest, when I'm standing, I don't lock out my knees, right? I keep my knees slightly bent and the core activated. Excellent. Just reaching back slightly, coming forward slightly. So there's, I don't know, maybe a few inches back, a few inches forward movement there. A few inches back, a few inches forward. It's like coming into my peripheral vision and then disappearing. I can't see it at all in my peripheral vision when my arms are slightly behind. Nice. I have a gentle tug on either side of the hand towel. And I'm just trying to open up a little bit through my shoulders. A lot of us can get very tight shoulders Right, from all the forward hunching, rounding on the computer, on the phone, uh, driving. And a lot of us do a lot of push-ups, right? And sometimes we don't concentrate on the back body, the posterior chain. Those push-ups will add to that tightness, although I am a fan of push-ups. <laughs> I am a fan. If you accidentally release your towel, just grab it again, 
continue. Give me three more. Push it back, hold, come forward. Push it back, hold, come forward. One last time. Push it back, hold. Excellent work. Here, I'm going to hold the towel more in the center. And I'm going to give it a slight pull apart, right? Pull apart. As I round my back, tuck chin to chest, slight bend in the knees. Let me show you from the side. Knees slightly bent, rounding through the back, pulling the towel out away, right? Out away, hands pulling away from each other. Slight curve in the arms, see that? And now I'm releasing my back. Releasing the back, allowing the shoulder blades to separate. But it's an active stretch, right? I'm not just, um, my elbows are not down. I, I, have, I have tension on the towel. I have tension through my arms and my back. I feel this a lot. Uh, stre the stretch is in the upper back for me, but I know I'm slightly rounded and you might start to feel a little lengthening through the whole back. Excellent. Bring it down. Give me a shoulder roll. I want you to hold the towel wide again. Take the feet wide and we're just going to rotate side to side, not to, not for a, a workout per se. This is more just for a release through the back. So I'm circling the arms out to the right and then out to the left. Notice my knees are bending. Definitely don't torque any knee here. So if you need to come up on the toe, like my, my left foot did there, and now my right foot, you can certainly come up and pivot on the ball of that foot so that you protect your knees. As my arms come out, they are parallel to the floor. So my arms are not down and my arms are not up, right? Parallel to the floor. Again, I'm pulling on the towel with both hands, pulling apart. And as I come to one side, I glance over that back shoulder. So I glance over the left and over the right, allowing the release through my spine and hip flexor. Excellent. Give me one more each way. Nice work. I like this towel to go behind your body now. Depends on your flexibility, how close you can get your hands on the towel or how far apart they might be. Maybe they're far, maybe they are close. Maybe you don't need the towel. If you don't need the towel, you can clasp your hands together behind you, right? That's an option. I'm particularly tight through my shoulders. So you will see me hold onto the towel and there might be a little space. It takes me a moment to open up just the shoulders. So let me move my hair out of the way. I roll my right shoulder back. I roll my left shoulder back. Now I'm open, but in that opening, if you released any of the abs through the rib cage, I want you to re-tuck, re-tuck through the pelvis so that the core is still active. Hold on to the towel, pull on either side of the towel, just like we did in front, and we're going to fold forward. I like my toes forward for this instead of turned out, and my back 
is flat, coming forward. My arms are not lifted just yet. My arms are just resting on my back and I'm holding the towel. Toes forward, folding forward, hinging at the waist, back is flat, right? So I'm not rounded. Notice how the shoulders droop there. I am hinging my shoulder blades back, I'm lengthening my spine, activating my core, and then when I can go no further flat back, I'm going to come all the way down, crown of head to towards mat. You can see my arms are still resting on my back. From here, I'm going to lift the arms up towards sky. And maybe you can lift them a little further up, or maybe you can walk your hands a little closer together on the towel. Just depends on your body. Take some deep breaths in here. And when you're ready, release the towel to the ground. Release your hands to the ground. And I want you to push your weight over to one, to your right hip. So let me show you here. I'm pushing my weight over to my right hip. And my hands are walking over towards that right leg. Not all my weight is in the right leg, but most of my weight is in the right leg. If you're not able to reach the ground with your hands, you can certainly have a stepping stool or a yoga block or some other resting point for your hands. Lengthen your spine, walk your hands towards center, and push your weight over to the left leg. So I'm gonna show you from the side, I'm pushing my weight to my left leg, walking my hands towards that left leg, but notice my spine, nice and long. If you need, you can have a slight bend in the knee, right? Otherwise, straining through the leg, Feeling the stretch in the hamstring. Breathing through this, lengthening. And guess what? We're gonna walk over to the right leg again. Walk over to the right leg. This time, pick up right hand towards sky and twist. So, I don't know if you can see from that angle, so I'm gonna show you from the side. My left hand stays down and my right arm stacks, making a straight line with both arms. My weight is slightly over the right leg and I'm opening up my chest to the side. Notice my back is still flat. I'm still working the hamstring on the right side, but I feel a little opening through the hip and the spine as I twist towards the right. Release that down, walk through center, walk over to the left side. Put that weight primarily in the left leg, right hand stays down, left hand rises. And again, I'm gonna show you from the side so you can see my arms make a straight line. 
think they, they stack as if they were the letter I, capital I, right there. I'm feeling the stretch through my left hamstring, my left eye T-band and hip. Right now I'm feeling a little release through the spine as I twist open, lifting gaze up. I have weight in my hand that's on the floor. Just breathing through this, allowing your body the time it needs to stretch and strengthen. I want you to release the hand down when you're ready. Come through center. We're going to bend the knees right, into a squat and straighten the legs into a hamstring stretch. We're going to do that again. Bend the knees into a squat. Straighten the legs into a hamstring stretch. We're going to do that again. Squat. See how my thighs come parallel to the floor? My arms are just on the inside of my knees. That's to encourage the knees going out over the toes. I'm going to show you from the front. Lengthen long. Straighten. See, I drop my hips down. I lift my chest up. My knees are still wide. Lengthen. Crown of head towards floor. Crown of head towards sky. Lengthen legs. Drop hips, bend knees, lift gaze. Drop hips, bend knees, lift gaze. Let's go one more time. Lengthen and drop. Nice job. I want you to walk your feet towards each other. I want you to walk your hands up your legs. I want you to give me a shoulder roll. I want you to hydrate and we'll continue. I hope you hydrated. Our next section of this lengthening, strengthening video is going to be more on the floor. So if you had that mat or a carpeted area, um, but something that's softer for your, your hands um, and your feet, that would be wonderful. I still have my towel handy for in a moment, but first let's start in a down dog. So for this, your hands will be placed on the mat. Do you see my, the bottom of your wrist there? That is to line up with the line of the top of the mat, right? So you spread your fingers wide. You rotate your hands to where the bottom line of the wrist is going to um, be parallel to the front of the mat here. Place hands down. There you go, you can see me. Tuck toes under, lift hips to sky. And feel the lengthening here as you try to drop ankles, as you attempt to push through your chest, your chest towards your thighs. You want to have a nice lengthening between ears and shoulders, right? So that when I'm in down dog, my shoulders are not up against my ears. It's a lengthening there. My feet are about hip width apart. I have rolled my elbows in so that when I'm in down dog, my elbows are not wide, but I've rolled my elbows in. Your fingers are spread wide, but not so much so that you're, you're spazzing out, right? It's a relaxed, wide finger. If this 
feels better for you to pedal the feet for a moment. You can pedal the feet. I'm going to show you from the side. So down dog here. My back is lengthening. My chest is going towards my thighs. And then I'm pedaling one heel down, then the other heel down. Because this is our first time in down dog today. And from here, I'm going to push through my toes, coming to plank. Yes, I'm a straight line, head to heels. My shoulders are over my wrists, and my hips are not lifted, and they're not sunk down. Right? You're in plank, and then you're going to push back, back down to down dog. This is your resting position. Soft bend in the elbow, tuck elbows in, lengthen your neck so that shoulders are far away from ears, and come forward for plank. Hold plank here, soft elbows, hold, and push back to down dog. Breathe here as you lengthen more through the hamstrings, further through the back, dropping ankles more near the floor, heels more near the floor. And one more time, push through to plank and hold plank. Tightening through the core, always dropping to the knees as needed. Push back to down dog. From here, we're going to come into a runner stretch. So when you're in down dog, come forward to plank, bring right leg around to runner stretch. You can always keep the back knee lifted or you can drop the back knee towards the mat. Let me show you from the side. Runners stretch. My front knee over front ankle, right? Not forward, over it. My back knee is lifted here, but you can always drop it down. It depends on what feels best for you. I want you to start to feel this through the hip flexor in the leg that's back, the leg that's straight. From here, you can even take this bent leg slightly out. I'm coming to the knife edge of my foot and rotating the knee outward to allow room for me to drop to my elbows. That is an option called lizard stretch. You're active though here. You can have the back toe tucked under, knee lifted, or you can have the back knee on the floor. Even in lizard stretch, even on the knife edge of my front foot, my, my foot is flexed to keep ankle in line with shin. I'm going to come back up onto my hands, bring the knee back right over the ankle, foot flat on the floor. I'm going to push my hips towards the back as I lengthen front leg popping up front toe. Front toe goes to sky. I whip out my spine long. I hang over that front foot to feel the hamstring stretch. Let me show you from the side. Right? So my back is flat, my toe directly up. Again, if you have a stepping stool on either side or a block, that you want to hold on to because your hands are not touching the ground, that is okay. Here 
here I'm dragging this heel forward as I drag my hips back so that there's a seesaw active motion in the back of the leg as I press my back flat down further. You're going to tuck that toe under, coming back to plank position, and the left leg is going to come around into a runner stretch. Right, find that runner stretch where the knee is over front ankle. Your back knee is lifted in an active stretch. Of course, you can drop back knee down. What I don't want to see is this front knee coming out over front ankle like that. That's a lot of pressure for your knee, so come back to where the front knee is right over front ankle. From here, I can roll onto the knife edge of my left foot, rotating that knee roll out to make way for me to come down to my forearms. That is an option for lizard stretch, not necessary, you can stay lifted. Hold it here as you feel the stretch in the hip flexor, in the hip in front, right? Maybe an inner thigh stretch for you too. As you slow the breath, calm the nervous system. Feel the lengthening in that active stretch as you pull a little more forward, maybe a little more side. Feel that. Come back to the hands. Send your hips right back. Pop up front toe, lengthen front leg, and whip spine long. Let me show you from the side. See that my back is flat. My front leg's straight. Of course, you can have a slight bend if you're not as flexible through the hamstring. My front toe super flexed, pointing not only towards ceiling, but even, even back towards kneecap. My hands rest on either side of my front leg. I breathe a little deeper into the stretch. allowing those tight hamstrings to release. Excellent. When you're ready, tuck your knees back under. Come back up to down dog. Tuck your toes under. Lift hips, down dog. Feet about hip width apart and see now as you're more released through the hamstring if you can actually drop your ankles now. If your ankles drop or your heels drop towards the floor all the way before mine were lifted. And now that my hamstrings have been released a little further, they can drop down. From here, I'm going to bring my right leg forward. My hands on the floor or yoga blocks or a stepping stool if you need. My left leg is going to lift parallel to the floor, foot flexed. Let me show you from the side. Parallel to the floor, foot flexed, toes down on that lifted leg, right? And my front leg mostly straight. My hands happen to reach the floor, but you can have a yoga block or stepping stool or coffee table to rest your hands on as needed. It's important here that the toes are down and not turned out. I want the toes down, and then I want you to cross that leg slightly back. So my leg is straight back here. It's going to cross over the other leg slightly. <sighs> 
You'll feel this in the hamstring and the IT band if you cross that leg. I'm trying to show the best way to show this. Don't switch leg yet. Keep it there. Keep it lengthening. Don't drop the leg that's up, right? Keep it parallel to the floor. When you're ready, release it down. You can slightly round the back, grab your arms for a moment, giving your wrists a little release. And when you're ready, come back up to a lengthened leg. Now the right leg comes up, foot flexed, leg parallel to the floor hands on the floor, or another support that is low. Lengthen through spine, flexed foot, and then cross that leg back over. So my, my right leg was straight back, and now it's crossed more towards my left side. You'll feel a lengthening through the side of the leg, that IT band, as well as your hamstring. Don't drop the leg, keep it lifted in parallel to the floor. And when you're ready, legs together, grab your elbows, Hang over, knees slightly bent. Knees slightly bent, just hang ragdoll style here. I want you to walk your hands up your thighs, around the back. Come all the way to standing, shoulder roll back. And we're gonna drop to the four more. So for this next <laughs> work, let's start with a cat cow. I like these because I really activate through the core as well as having mobility happening through the spine. So on all fours, hips over knees, shoulders over wrists, round the back as you tuck in through the pelvis, tuck chin to chest, and drop belly as you lift gaze, lift hips. All right, let's do that again. Round and tuck. Drop and lift. Round and tuck. Drop belly, lift gaze. Now from here, you're ready to make a drum jump rope motion with the torso as if I were to allow someone to jump rope right over my back, right? So rocking side to side as I round and lift and drop and round. We're gonna go the other way with it. So whatever way you weren't going, Excellent. Let me show you from the side. Excellent. Reach and drop and round. This is just to get more mobility through the spine. Nice work. We're going to move on to some more hip openers. Usually when you're with me, we do plenty of squats and lunges. Uh, so I want to make sure I show you the best ways to release all of that. Or the most, uh, I don't know, the best ways, the most effective for me that I hope you will find some, um, some relief in as well, I should say. 
First, I just want you to come and sit crisscross applesauce. For a lot of us, that might be enough. For some of us, you might want to get a pillow to sit your uh, sits bones on so that your hips are slightly lifted because the goal is to get the knees to drop below hips. Right? That's the, the ultimate goal and plenty of, uh, plenty of athletes spend many years attaining that goal. So if it doesn't happen right away, that's okay. The next level of this is going to bring one of your legs, let's, let's do um, your left leg, on top of your right. So, like so. Again, I'm not as mobile through my, my hips, so you can see that this knee is a little higher than my hip, but because of the weight of my leg, it's allowing my right knee to drop below my hip. So here, I have stacked my shins one over the other, this is the next level up from crisscross applesauce. You can choose that first version or you can choose this version. I do have my top foot flexed as always to keep that ankle in line with the shin so that uh, it's less opportunity to bend the wrong way or a way that is highly uncomfortable for you. And here, this, this is really doing a lot of work through the hips. I hope you can feel the hips start to open here. I'm just breathing in and breathing out, allowing the process to unfold. You can't really force it here. It just takes time. If you need a little bit more, certainly you can walk your hands more forward. You'll start to feel the stretch deep in there. And when you're ready, you can uncross, come back to crisscross applesauce for a moment. Give me a shoulder roll. And when you're ready, take that right leg and place it on top of the left. Or if you just want to sit crisscross applesauce, that's okay. Again, you'll see the pressure of my right leg drop my left knee down below my hip. But because I'm pretty tight through the hips, you'll still see my right leg up above my hip level. Now I could grab a pillow and rise my sit bones a little higher um, but I prefer just to be on the ground for right now. I am flexing that right ankle. Okay. Flex that. And I'm lengthening through the spine, so I'm not rounding forward at all. My back is lifted and strong. It's an active stretch. You can see um, my spine is long. And then when I'm ready for a little bit more, I remain fat, flat backed and come a little more forward, right? A little more forward so that I feel the deepening stretch through my hips. ready, you can uncross, extend the legs long, and I like to just shake it out here. Shake it out, shake it out. Nice. I'm going to roll my ankles. They just were flexed for a while, and I want a little bit of lengthening there. Excellent. So, the next in the hips is bringing the right leg out in front. My left leg is bent in back, that's level one. My right shin is parallel to the front of my mat, right? The front of my mat. If you need, you can bring in this right heel more towards your um, back leg. 
that would be an easier version of this, but I like that parallel. And I even like to extend my back leg so that I'm right over this front leg. I start to feel the hip stretch right now. Like right now I'm feeling it. But I might need a little bit more, same with you. So I'm going to bring my hands forward and fold over the front leg. My back is still flat. Let me show you from the side. Back leg extended, my front leg parallel to the front of the mat. My back is flat, right? I'm just coming forward. My back toes, my the top of my back foot is down, right? Facing down. It's not out to the side. It's facing down and I really have to adjust my torso up over the front leg. Breathe through this stretch. Allow the hip to release slowly one muscle fiber at a time. When you're coming forward, you just come to the point of tension for you, right? If you want, you can extend the arms all the way long, dropping head to mat. When you're ready, come up, and guess what? We're going to switch legs. <laughs> so again, level one, both legs bent. The front leg, front shin is parallel to the front of the mat. And if you want more, you extend that back leg long. The top of the foot faces down. If this foot is too uncomfortable being parallel to the front of the mat, you bring this heel more towards back leg. That would be an easier level. You choose, orientate that torso right over front leg. And right here might be more than enough for you, right? That may be a really intense stretch, one that you shouldn't go further if you're feeling any sharp shooting pains. You only want to come to the point of tension, something just outside your comfort zone, and when you're ready, you can drop to your elbows, or maybe you want to drop all the way forward, extending arms long. You might find that you are more open through one hip than the other. Each side of our body is not always created equal. can change through genetics, right? Through injury, through just muscular imbalances we may be creating in our workout spaces. Or our everyday life. So think about that. Maybe something you always do on your right side or you always do on your left side. Like in basketball, a typical athlete will usually do a layup and always land first on their left leg if they are right-handed. Or if you're right-handed, you might always brush your teeth with your right hand. You may want to think about doing those everyday things on the other side. And it only changes musculature in your body, but it changes the connections in your brain. It makes more or different neuro connections, which is a wonderful thing.
when you're ready and come on up. We are going to use the towel for our next stretch and I'm actually going to change orientation of my body to show you better. I want you to lie down on the mat on your back. I want you to bring um, one leg up and let's loop the towel underneath that leg. I want you to grab the towel, both ends of the towel in the opposite hand. So the towel is over my right leg, but my left hand is reaching for that. With this free leg, I want you to extend it long and flex the foot. With that hand that's holding the towel, I want you to bring the leg slightly crossed over the midline. I want you to flex the feet and bring the heel and rotate the leg to the outside so that the heel is closer to the ground and the toes are closer to the sky. And with this free hand, I want you to push the hip towards the mat. So my leg is crossed over, holding the towel, rotating out, hip pressing down, free leg along the floor, and, and flexed. We're going to stretch the IT band or all the muscles that connect to the IT band. If you're not feeling this, maybe you need to rotate your thigh more out. Maybe you need to bring the leg more over. Maybe you need to press your hip more towards the ground. Try all those things so that you start to feel the stretch through the outside of this crossed leg. This can be pretty intense if it's your first time. And when you're ready, you can release the towel, release the leg, and bring the other leg up, towel looped on the bottom side of the foot. Grab the towel in the opposite hand, extend this free leg long, flex that foot, bring the towel across the body, rotate this thigh towards the outside, straightening leg, dropping heel more towards floor, toe more towards sky, and with this free hand, push the hip back down. Maybe you need to bring the leg further across. Maybe you need to force the hip closer towards the mat. And maybe you just need to flex the feet a little harder. Try all those things so that you feel the outside of this crossed leg. Lengthen and release. The IT band is one of the hardest areas to really get a nice, solid stretch. And I want us to feel that. And when you're ready, release that. Roll over to your belly. Place your elbows right underneath your shoulders. I want you to lift the gaze, drop shoulders, lengthen neck, just giving me a little baby cobra, the palms of my hands face the mat, my hips are dropped down to floor, I want you to drop all the way down, place your hands underneath your shoulders, push back to child's pose, drop forehead to mat, 
Walk your fingertips way up. Bring your hands back in. Push up to kneeling. Give me a shoulder roll. And guess what? We did a whole lengthening, strengthening video together that I want you to use whenever you need a nice solid cool down, a nice solid stretch after a tough strength workout or a tough cardio workout. I want you to use this to reset your nervous system, followed by a good eight hours sleep. I think you'll be a, a new person after that. Thank you for joining me again, and I'll see you next time.